Question number one, part A. Evaluate 0 0.2 times 0 0.08. So the trick that I use is I first multiply those two, which is 2 times 8 is what? Is 16. And then I count the number of decimal place. So here we have one two decimal place, and here we have one. So two decimal place plus one decimal place is three decimal place. So I have one, two, three decimal place. So that will be my answer, 0 0.016, okay? Now part B, add one bracket, add one pair of brackets to make the statement below true. So where can I add my bracket? So this term becomes 70. So for example, if, if I put my bracket on the first two, so we will have uh, two times three is six, six plus four times five is 20. So it will be 26, which is not good. So in this case, I can see I will need to put my bracket here because three plus four is seven. And then we have two times five is 10 times seven is 70. So bracket will be on these two. So question number two, find the perimeter of the shape below. All the angles are right angles and all the lengths are in centimeters. So we can see this is six and this is four centimeters. And this is one, which means this is also one. So this we don't know, and this we don't know. So what we can do is we can use a trick. We can take this whole line, we move it down to this. And we take this line, we'll move it down. So now we have the same thing, but now we know this length is six, and this length here, we know is 4. So we know this, this, this. So we do the same trick here. We move this length up to here. So now we know this is 6, this is 4, this is 6, and 4. So now we're only missing those two. So we have to add them separately. So these two lines. So let's do the math. So let's begin here. This is 4 plus 6 plus 4 and plus, we have to plus 6, plus 1, and 1, plus 2, which is equal to 22. So your answer will be 22 centimeters. So that's just a trick you will need to use to um, find the correct uh, perimeter because you cannot really find this side, nor this side properly. You actually have to use the trick move this out and move this one out so it becomes like a rectangle and you move this out it becomes like a rectangle and this one is just an extra we have to measure that too so that's how you find for uh, the parameter for this one and the answer you will have will be 22. part b on the grid below a trapezium with a height of four centimeter and an area of 18 centimeters square the one side of the trapezium has been drawn for you. So what is this side length? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six, right? The length of this side. So we're given the area of the trapezium. So how do we find the area? Usually we have to uh, do half times the sum of both sides. So we have one side, which is six plus, let's call the other side um, L and then times the height in between, which is four. So all this is equal to 18 centimeters square. So now let's simplify. So this will be one, this is two. So expand the bracket, we will have two times six is 12, plus two L is equal to 18. So two L is equal to 18 minus 12. So two L is six, L is three. So the length on the other side is three. So we have to draw this on the diagram. So let's count. So the height is four. So one, two, three, four, and three. One, two, three. Here we go. So now we just have to join the points to have a trapezium. This will be on this side.
and that's it for part B. Question number three. In the diagram we have AB is, so AB is here, is parallel to DC. So these two lines are parallel. So now we have AD, so AC, A to C, intersect with BD, BD at E. Okay, triangle ADE, so ADE is right angled. And isosceles with AD equal to DE. So these two sides are the same. Isosceles triangle. Okay, so from this, what do we know? We know that this angle is the same as this angle. So let's find the angle. So this is 90. So remaining will be 90 divided by 2, which will be 45. So this angle is 45 and 45. Okay. So now moving on to the question. Find the angle X. So here we have to use a rule what that we have for uh, when lines are parallel to each other. So when we have a line here and when we have two parallel lines so these two lines are parallel and when they are joined by a diagonal this angle is equal to this angle so same example for the main, the main um, diagram so we have a Z that forms here so this line is parallel to this line and this line joins this line so this angle is the same as this angle right so now if you take the triangle a b d out so let's take it out we'll see what happens so a so we have a b and d out this is right angle triangle and this is 25 so what is this angle this big angle it will be um, 180 minus 90 and minus 25 that would be um, 65 so which means this big angle is 65 so X is equal to 65 minus 45 so 65 minus 45 is what is 20 so X is 20 Question number four, part A. Express 36 as a product of its prime factors. Okay, so let's do it. So 36 divided by two, that will be 18. Um, divided by two, that will be nine. Divided by three, that will be three. So 36 is equal to two times two times three times three, which is two square times three square. So that's it, that's your answer for Part A. So now part B, I'll write down two prime numbers whose sum is 15. So what prime numbers do you know? You know 2 is prime number, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, um, 17, and so on. So let's find the sum of two prime numbers equal to 15. So if I do 13 plus 2, is 15 so 2 and 13 are my two prime numbers so that's uh, n are my two prime numbers that adds up to 15. question number five we have carl spent 10 minutes on his english homework that's the first um, information that we have so english homework He spent T minutes, right? And then we have, he spent three times as long on his math homework as on his English homework. So math, he spent three times as much, so three T minutes, right? So now we're given that he spent a total of two hours and 20 minutes. So what is two hours and 20 minutes in minutes? So 2 hours is 2 times 60 minutes plus 20, that will be 120 plus 20, that will be 140 minutes in total he spent. Okay, so write down an equation to represent this information. So we have T for English plus 
3t for math equal to 140. So we have 4t equal to 140. So what is the value of t? t will be 140 divided by 4. If we divide by 2, we will have 70 to 35. So the t is 35 minutes. So that's your answer. Question number six. Complete the sentences below, which describes two different types of quadrilateral. So at least we know they have four sides for the shapes. So now part A. So what has two pairs of equal sides and just one line of symmetry? So what kind of quadrilateral do you know? We know square, rectangle, rhombus, kite. Uh, also we have parallelograms. So for this one, it will be a kite. Why? Because if you look at a kite, So these two sides are equal, and these two sides are equal. And they only have one line of symmetry in the middle. So that's why a kite is the first answer. A kite has two pairs of equal sides, so one pair and two pairs, and just one line of symmetry, one line in the center. Okay, so now we move on to part B. A has two pairs of equal sides, no line of symmetry has no line of symmetry and has a rotational symmetry of order two. This is pretty obvious because uh, if we take a rectangle, they have two pairs of equal side, but they have two lines of symmetry. So it can only be by elimination, we find that it can only be a parallelogram for this diagram. So it has two pairs of equal side and then has rotational symmetry of order two. So if you rotate this by 180, it become the same. So that's your answer, a parallelogram has two pairs of equal sides and no line of symmetry and rotational symmetry of order two. So you will ask, okay, how do I find those answers? So the first thing you will need is you will need to know your shapes and then you will have to proceed by elimination to find those two answers.